What's up guys, welcome back to Onescapes. I'm Ryan and this is the video for my river ecosphere. I froze the frame here because um, I actually just wanted to show things you can find as well while you're out. Always when you, you know, go into the woodlands, you can always find really nice things on the floor. You know, little pine cones, things like that. So hey, we're gonna be keeping these. And when you go as well, make sure you've got a trusty, cute little doggo by your side, just in case, you know, there's lions and bears out there as well. But um, anyway, we'll get on with the video. Um, what I am going to do today is be collecting moss, um, collecting river water, river soil, things like that. And this is the river I collected it from. What I did do though is I got some water which was more clear towards the top end of the river just because the clarity was a lot nicer as opposed to the sort of boggy area at the bottom where you know event you probably wouldn't be able to see through it as much and I know the sediment will drop but having some you know river water that is clearer anyway it'll just give me that little bit of a head start. The first one here is pointed feather moss um, I'll put the Latin name on there as well um, but generally, you know, whenever you're trying to keep moss or have it grow as you would, just make sure you look at where it's actually growing really well in nature as well. But the common name for this is shingle moss. I will also put the Latin name on so you can see that too. And then last but not least is the common feather moss. That one in particular, it's actually a really nice moss. It's always one of the most lush green mosses if you can get it right. But the shingle moss here is very delicate. It's a lot harder to grow and you do need to have you know that consistency within the humidity everything like that and i've noticed it's very very specific but this is the final one and um, like i say it's very lush green this one was growing just um, on the tarmac at the side of the uh, footpath so when you you know you think about it it was actually on a hill these are the botanicals i've got i also added some indian almond leaves i will be adding these in the day after though just because for now i want to add the moss in get all the inhabitants in i took some moss from the river as well um just because i know there's a lot more things inside uh, inside moss in the rivers um that's where a lot of things like to hang around especially things like scuds this is the jar i'll be using for the ecosphere so it's not huge but it's a really good size and it's enough for me to um you know add quite a lot of water in i think it filled um i think it sorry took the whole two liter bottle of river water at the end so that was um you know that was good it's a good volume um and two liters is i mean for, for a river recourse for you you know it's good enough i started off by adding all of the soil um you know the thick black sludgy soil um and then i started to fill it up and um, obviously add the moss in. So I put a little bit of the water in at this point, then I started to drop the moss in. Um, and I did have a lot of duckweed attached to the moss, which it, you know is actually really useful. I always think floating plants are kind of essential for little river ecospheres, in my opinion. Um, you know, they're the what things that are gonna be soaking up so much nutrients and giving so much more oxygen back into that ecosphere. So floating plants, in my opinion, are kind of crucial in a little uh, ecosphere like this. Um, but here's the moss. I added um, because it's river moss you know I'm not actually going to be making this look as visually appealing as you know I always wanted it to look the reason being it's a river ecosphere it doesn't have to look the best in the world ultimately all we're doing is observing the inhabitants that are inside I will be up updating this in a month I'll run through every single inhabitant once I've caught all of that footage because at the moment the only few things I saw um, which I will um, explain a little bit later, the things that I saw mostly, which were, you know, your river isopods, uh, your flatworms, that sort of thing. But again, I just want to, you know, sort of record that over the next course of a month or so and have a nice breakdown on every single um, inhabitant that is inside this little ecosphere. But I also wanted to show how you can do this, you know, um, by just going out and getting a jar. And it's as easy as that. I did add different species of floating plants. The one I added was Salvinia minima, which is just from one of my aquariums. And then as you can see there, we've got some duckweed. And it is starting to clear up a little bit. This was a time lapse over about 20 minutes and you do see it start to clear up, but I think I'll just let it sit for a day and then I'll be able to record certain things. But I did take a little bit of footage of um, some of the inhabitants that were inside on day one. But as you can see, the clarity is really bad. There wasn't enough light coming through uh, for the light that I bought for it. 
so there wasn't enough light actually physically going in which was frustrating because um, you know it's just because it was so cloudy and the next day you'll realize obviously there's a lot more clarity inside the setup um, but look how much activity how much wildlife is in there I absolutely love this um, and it is the reason I love doing things like this because you just see so many cool um, you know little things inside and not just these you know if you're looking at the scuds look at the tiny tiny little things around and um, just around them tiny things moving little worms and um, gastropods things like that everything it's so so cool um, but like I said I'll be updating this in a month with every single inhabitant just to see how it goes all the inhabitants and then we can just obviously um, watch the pro uh, progress of those inhabitants we see which ones boom see which ones potentially die off um, and again I had some stem plants the next day from my, one of my aquariums I just took some cuttings from one of the plants uh, and added them in I did obviously stir it all up again doing that um, but this is literally a 20 minute, no sorry, 30 minute time lapse and you can see just how much is actually there. This is the same day, you can see everything moving, um, how much actual life there is in there. And that thing in the center there on the left, the worm looking thing, I believe that that was a bobbit worm. From my memory it's a bobbit worm and I always thought they were marine so if you know anything about that then let me know because I was, I was really confused when I saw it because I always thought that was, like I say, for, for marine. So the clarity is getting a little bit clearer on day one, but we'll have a look at it again, uh, sorry, we'll have a look at this again tomorrow, and then we'll be able to see, um, you know, things inside there are a little bit better. But for now, there is a ton of activity, and there is so, so many scuds, I actually didn't realize how many there would be. This is the day after, as you can see, it's a lot clearer, but I do just absolutely messed this up i messed it up because every time i was trying to put a plant in or something uh, like you know botanicals in there um it, it just i just kept moving the moss and getting the tweezers stuck on the moss and ruining the whole thing so by the end of it i just sort of stuffed it all in and thought well either way it's a river ecosphere it's not supposed to be the most um you know visually appealing it's literally to you know observe nature it's it's then that's what it's built for so i can actually see the, the development of it um, as it goes on in time and you know we might be looking at you know an update in a year's time and we might only have two or three different type of um, inhabitants in here but that's what you know we're here to do observe and see what thrives what dies um, what plants survive if the moss does good if them stem plants do good but I wanted to add stem plants in because they are massive um, nutrient absorbers and they will take a lot of crap out of the water um, so and I did have so add some um, little pine cones um, things like that just uh, cocoa bracts just things that make it look more visually appealing um, and I guess a little bit a little bit more aged so this was sort of the final look for now I know it's not so clear but you will see um, sort of later on uh, on the next update in about a month's time the clarity will have improved some of the water will go a little bit dark um, you know like a black water aquarium obviously having botanicals in there um, but regardless uh, I think that you know all of the inhabitants in there will benefit from this and remember if you do like the video smash that like button subscribe to the channel so you can see the update on this but as always from me guys, peace and love, I'm out.